Ladies and gentlemen, the pleb is back in tonight's report. The RCMP are now demanding Justin Trudeau step down for his own safety due to the high levels of unrest in Canada right now. As well, tonight, Doug Ford finally talks tough with Justin Trudeau and tells him if he doesn't get rid of the carbon tax, Canadians will get rid of Trudeau. As well, I have more updates for you guys on the carbon tax protest camp out in Alberta. You won't want to miss tonight's story. Stick around. And as usual, folks, please double check that you are still subscribed. YouTube is unsubscribing you guys from conservative channels such as mine, Tucker Carlson, Benny Johnson, as a soft form of censorship. So let's fight back against the censors. Smash the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, because I'm going to tell you the news the mainstream media won't. Well, folks, tonight's story is going to start with the never-ending corruption here in Canada. I don't know if you guys heard this story about last week, that the Canadian government now wants to delay the next election so over 20 Liberal MPs will qualify for their pension after destroying the country. Per the National Post here... Liberals plan to quietly delay election would secure millions for their doomed MPs. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen him do. You're literally going to delay an election so your co-workers qualify for pensions when they absolutely don't deserve it. Welcome to Trudeau's Canada. But there is a silver lining underneath this whole story, as it appears now that the RCMP are secretly demanding Justin Trudeau step down for the good of the country and for his own safety. Per Trudeau's ego here on X, this is a parody tweet, but it's so close to reality. My RCMP security detail has suggested I step down as prime minister for my own safety due to rising unrest in this country. Not only will I ignore that advice, <laughs> I'm going to make the lives of my citizens worse. Canadians have no right to be angry with their government and I will fight them until my last breath. Now, the RCMP are predicting mass civil unrest here in Canada once Canadians find out how screwed we truly are. And I was able to dig up this video here on X from Professor Peter St. Onge, who explains just how screwed Canadians truly are. Watch. If you happen to live in Canada and haven't yet escaped, it's about to get a lot worse. That's according to a newly leaked secret report from the RCMP, that's the Canadian equivalent of the FBI, they warn that Canada's quality of life will, quote, deteriorate further in the next few years, writing that, quote, the coming period of recession will accelerate the decline in living standards, in particular for the young. They even warn of the, quote, end of abundance. That's just the opener. The RCMP goes on to warn this radical decline in living standards could lead to widespread, quote, disillusion with the government to which law enforcement needs to respond. In other words, they're not just saying it's going to get bad. They're saying it could get so bad that once peaceful Canadians rise up in mass. The report was obtained by an activist professor at UBC who filed an access of information request. What they handed over is heavily redacted, meaning we can only imagine what other gems are in store for the long-suffering people of Canada. We can also only imagine what countermeasures the RCMP is suggesting to law enforcement. Mm. Given the redactions, perhaps they are actions or laws they imagine voters might not like. The background here is that Canada's had a tough decade under their buffoon Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I've mentioned in previous videos what's happening in Canada's economy. In short, houses cost San Francisco prices, but jobs pay West Virginia wages, if Oof. you can find one. According to the National Post, just one in four Canadian families can afford a house, while Canadian wages have been flat since 2016. That's eight years. Ouch. The average Canadian now earns almost 18000 less than an American, hence West Virginia. Why? Simple. Under Trudeau, the Canadian government has taken over the economy. 
Business investment in Canada has plunged by a third, while government workers are growing almost four times faster than the private sector. One in five Canadians now work for the government, so they presumably vote to make it bigger. And One in five Canadians work for the government? Does, is the government the largest employer here in Canada? That is messed up. Wow. And they earn 30% more than the tax-paying suckers who foot the bill, who, by the way, on average, fork over half of their salary. In theory, the government of Canada would see this and respond with new policies. In fact, they are they're building out the police state. From the authoritarian crackdown on the truckers back in 2022 to a new so-called online hate bill that would throw you in jail, potentially for life, if a judge thinks you said something racist or transphobic on Facebook. Now, that might give a hint of what's in all those redacted pages about how law enforcement might address the end of abundance. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. Canada's next election might not be for another year and a half. In Canada's system, the date is at Justin Trudeau's pleasure. Conservative apple muncher Pierre Polyev <laughs> is ahead in the polls, one reason Trudeau might want to wait. And Pierre is base enough to at least stop things getting worse. But of course, Canada state-run media from the CBC on down are working Pierre the way our own loyal state media worked Trump. True. Either way, a year and a half is a long time for things to get worse. And it's a long time for baby Doc Trudeau to impose whatever creative solutions the RCMP is hiding from voters. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time. 20% of Canadians work for the government. How are we ever supposed to succeed with a government that large? That is literally insane. Can you guys tell me in the comments how many other countries have governments this large? Because we have to be one of the largest governments in the world, right? And after yesterday's heckling press conference where Justin Trudeau admits that he completely screwed up immigration. Watch this video here that's going viral on TikTok where a woman breaks down exactly what's going on with the housing market. I feel like this might be Trudeau's most out of touch video yet. If you're renting right now, you're gonna wanna hear this. I am renting. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. Our upcoming budget is gonna make renting fairer. Oh really? I have high hopes for that. That means making sure you can see what previous tenants of your apartment paid so you can negotiate a fair deal. Negotiate? Here's a story. My family is currently being evicted from the home that we've lived in for the past six years. We have been the perfect tenants. The reason why we're being evicted is because you have opened the floodgates of immigration. Wealthy people from other countries are buying up properties and using loopholes to evict people from their homes. My community is actively being displaced. We have no idea what we're going to do or where we're going to live. Houses have doubled in price. Buying a house is unattainable. Rental prices have doubled and are in high demand because of the lack of housing. There are multiple families living in one home. And you think we have the ability to negotiate? Spare me. It means making sure that your rent payments are counted by the bank towards your credit score. Canadians are facing rent prices that are double. There are people that are having a hard time to pay their rent. And you think it's a good time to attach rent payments to our credit scores? Okay. Doesn't make any sense for someone who pays $2,000 a month in mortgage payments to get credit for it but not someone who's paying $2,000 in rent. And we're bringing in new rights and protections for renters so that you don't have to stand up to rent evictions, bad landlords, or rent hikes alone. Creating new regulations on landlords just punishes the good ones, while the bad ones will find loopholes to evict tenants anyway. This leaves people looking for a new home in a market where, if you're lucky to find a new place at all, you'll likely be paying double for less, eating into your savings and making ownership that much more difficult. It's all part of making renting fairer, and it's part of giving you a leg up for when it comes time to buy your own home. Every time I feel like we're just about there, wealthy investors from out of the country buy up all the affordable properties and put them up for rent, inflating the market prices even higher. This is what's happening. This is what our upcoming budget is going to do to focus on making the housing market fairer for every generation. Or you could actually address the problem and get a handle on mass immigration because nothing you've suggested is actually helpful. In fact, I would say what you have suggested 
has the potential for harm. Great job. So our economy is falling apart. The housing market's falling apart. Immigration is completely broken. And Justin Trudeau is now losing the debate on the carbon tax. And you know things are bad for Justin Trudeau when Doug Ford finally grows a spine and calls him out for this carbon tax nonsense. Watch. Having heard that from the independent businesses, why are you passing a law to raise uh, natural gas rates on not only small businesses, but everybody in Ontario so that you can keep the, the price of houses down slightly? Well, we aren't passing any law to increase any taxes. I, I don't know where you're getting that from, but anyways, we, we will... we. Well, we, we will be working with our small businesses to keep all rates down and all taxes down. But let, let's just, the, folks, let's cut to the chase. This carbon tax has to go, hmm. or in a year and a half, the prime minister's going. As wow. simple as that. He will be going. I'll guarantee you uh, he will not be there. If he doesn't, if he doesn't start uh, looking after the people and the businesses of Ontario, the ideology they have is, is just beyond me. Wow. I, I just I do not understand it at all. Wow. Doug Ford is finally talking tough to Justin Trudeau. The man who keeps kissing his behind is finally growing a spine saying this carbon tax has to go or else the prime minister will. Damn. Things can't be getting worse for the prime minister. Every part of wokeness here in Canada is currently crumbling. I mean, it starts at the top with Justin Trudeau, but it trickles its way down as Canada has some of the worst mayors in the entire world. And the mayor of Toronto said something absolutely ridiculous this week when she came out and blamed the people of Toronto for having too nice of cars. And that's the reason that car thefts are up in her city. Watch. Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow joins me now in studio. Mayor, thanks for coming in. Hello. So there was a New York Times article, uh, and this was a headline recently, for car thieves, Toronto is a candy store. What do you make of the fact that Toronto has this reputation? I guess we have a lot of candies. We have a lot of good cars here in Toronto. What? What? We have a lot of good cars here in Toronto. Toronto. Wow. These people will never accept responsibility for their own policies. It's absolutely infuriating. Never taking any responsibility. Justin Trudeau, Olivia Chow. How about I show you what woke Toronto looks like on the streets? Wow. A world-class city, guys. This is the new Toronto here under Olivia Chow sickening but there is light at the end of the tunnel regarding these woke mayors in canada as the people of alberta and calgary to be specific appear to be rejecting their woke mayor and she got herself absolutely booed at a hockey game watch this became calgary the mayor of calgary Jody <laughs> revolt against wokeness is happening all over the country and as i covered yesterday there are carbon tax protests happening all across canada and we are now at day three of the protests and i do want to apologize about yesterday's episode i forgot to include british columbia and they showed up strong over in bc here's some footage from drea humphrey from rebel news Turnout. That's a solid turnout. I know. Man, British Columbia is going conservative in a big way. If anybody could let me know if they are camping out at the BC location in the comments, I definitely appreciate it. Now we're going to move things over to Calgary, Alberta, where the protesters are still camping out there. And this protester explains what the protest is all about. The taxes, the 
carbon taxes, yeah. the cost of living, and we've had it. The protest started yesterday and it's still going on on the second day. When is it going to end? Well, I've, I've packed for three weeks. Uh, there is a, a few of us who have packed enough food for three weeks. Uh, there are some really nice people in the town close by in Cochrane that have volunteered to come and do our laundry for us. So we would like to stay here for as long as it takes to end the carbon tax. And over in Alberta, something really funny happened where the protesters started trolling the RCMP with stormtrooper music. Watch. <laughs> Wow, that's World War II Nazi Germany music. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny, man. And the protests have finally spread over to my province here. Quebec, Ontario border, where protesters have gathered at the truck stop and are camping out to protest the carbon tax. Those are the scenes at the truck stop there. Okay. Yes, sir. And I happened to go down there myself this morning to go and just see what was happening on the ground. Here's some of my footage. <laughs> With the Canadian flags and a tested positive for freedom. Oh, wow. It's the Flev. How's it going, man? I'm really not bad. How are you doing? It's always fun to run into people who watch this channel. And I ran into a few earlier at the protests. And while I was there, I spoke to the lead organizer and I asked him, how long are you staying there for? And what exactly is the objective of the protest? But uh, I mean, we've been getting overwhelming support from this busy highway. And this is probably one of the most busiest highways in North America. Of I mean, course. Yeah. Yes. So we're catching lots of attention here. Watch yourself, guys. Be careful. There are trucks there coming. Are. There you go. You got a honk. <laughs> so yeah. So in the next couple of days, you expect this protest to grow, more people to come. Yes. You guys are not leaving. You're holding the line and you're staying here. You're camping out until what's the goal? Like, are you camping here until the carbon tax is gone, till Trudeau is gone? What exactly? Make a point to the government that the carbon tax is not accepted here in this country. Yeah. And CTV put out a survey. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes. And uh, it was overwhelming support. Three quarters it's of really, Canadians do not support yeah, the carbon we tax. we do not want this carbon tax. Nobody does. And we're staying So here you're staying here control. until the carbon tax is I'm gone. I'm standing here and I'm staying. Anyone here. else? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. What, 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 what do you, uh, what's the plan for you here? Are you staying here until? I'm, I'm staying here until. Uh, Prota until, until, until the carbon tax is gone? Yeah, I'm staying until uh, either the carbon tax is God, or I'm divorced, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> How many more protesters are you guys expecting here in the next couple of days? Sorry for the wind, guys. Freedom! Uh, we're probably going to end up with a couple of hundred more for sure. Couple of hundred more, yeah. okay. People have to work, right? And some people have to come on the way. Of course. Yeah, it is a Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. afternoon. Yes. Yeah. I'm expecting by the weekend you're going to see a lot more show up. Okay. Because in this country right now, a lot of people are living from paycheck to paycheck. That's true. Uh, everyone knows me as Gary from the north, but I'm here on the Ontario Quebec border, and I've been staying up this from the beginning, and everyone else here has joined me, and I am the voice. They are the warriors. So, Awesome stuff, man. Yes. So yes, folks, they are camping out at the Quebec-Ontario border. And if you guys have more footage from these other encampments, please send them over to me on X at the bottom of the screen here at Truck Driver Pleb. Let me know any updates you guys have regarding the carbon tax protest. All right, guys, that's a wrap here for today's video. But let me know in the comments. Do you guys support these carbon tax protests? Are you guys going to attend these possibly on the weekend when you're not working? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, smash the like button, share it. Tell your friends the pleb is back on YouTube. My name is the pleb, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.